Well, a lot of progress has been made with animations lately, and uh, that's what I'm working on mostly. Um, you can tell that the sword swinging animation is um, really a lot more refined than it used to be. Um, we used to have just basically some really rough animations where um, all you would see was like just <laughs> like a rotation of the arm by 90 degrees that looks really cheesy. But now we have a really nice and refined animation, which if you can, I'll turn on these uh, hitboxes and you can see that it's pretty close to, um, the hitboxes are pretty close to where the animation is stretching its extents. So you get a good feeling for where, where the sword is actually doing damage without having to have these collision boxes showing you where that is, um, which is a, something that's very important in a game like this where you're hacking and slashing, you're swinging your sword. Um, you need to be able to kind of feel that distance where the sword is actually hitting really, uh, really as accurately as possible with just the animation. Um, uh, not to, you know, in things like adding sparks and smoke and things like that really help a lot also to tell how far that distance is, but uh, the animation is the most important piece, I would, I, I feel like, at this point. Um, I'm going to add another sword singing, swinging animation, so eventually the character will have two stances. This will be the first stance, and then there'll be a second stance where he kind of like, uh, his, maybe his feet will be a little bit different, or maybe he holds a sword different, not quite sure. But anyways, that stance will have a different sword swinging animation. So just sitting here wailing on the sword attack button will look a lot more um, varied, even though it only has two animations. And I'm really going to have to keep it to two animations for this game because uh, every single animation exponentially increases the amount of artwork I'll have to create when it comes to adding cloaks and different pieces of armor, helmets, gauntlets, boots, that kind of stuff. All that's going to require a um, reanimating everything for that new piece of art. So, got to keep the basic animations down to a bare minimum. Um, another thing that I've refined is the running animation. It's a uh, before it was a lot more clunky. Um, it wasn't very smooth with his legs. He didn't lean into it. His body didn't respond physically to how you know your body would. Um, so that's that's a lot more. A lot, a lot of improvements there. Um, one thing I just noticed uh, today was that the um, the sword swinging animation is actually casting a shadow. So I need to work on uh, the voxels for the sword swing actually not able to cast shadows. That's pretty simple. It basically just needs to become semi-transparent. My idea there, let's go to Magic of Voxel. Um, let's get this sword swinging animation open to a frame with some of its... Uh, um, there we go. We got some of those, these white voxels right here. Basically, what I'm going to do is I've already got something in pro in play in the code, which will take a mod magic of voxel uh, model and take all take a section of colors and translate those colors based on their hue saturation value. Basically, do a hue saturation value transformation on those colors too. Whatever your team colors are, your skin color, your um, clothes color—that's how the, the it works. Basically, it just takes all these vo all these voxels and changes all their colors, so that um, I don't know. It just basically allows a model to be much more varied. But what I'll do is I'll add something so that this last row of colors right here will become a different type of hue transformation or color transformation where it applies some op some alpha opacity to that. So maybe this whitish, the, the whitest part of this color right here will become uh, like 90% opaque. And then this one will become like 70% opaque and so on based on the color's value, the overall tone. Um, yeah, and I've, uh, along the way of reanimating these, or these, doing these animations this week, I've found a lot of shortcuts which really help with Magicka. Um, so if anybody else out, out there in the world is working with this kind of stuff, Go to Magica's um, shortcuts. Just look up Magica Voxel shortcuts, or go to their website. The shortcuts right here. Um, these uh, after a few different studies of this, I've I finally found. Oh, there's like one really important um, thing I can do here, and let me show you those two things. The first most important one is every time I was reloading an um, an animation, it always Magica always resets the camera, 
and it would be really nice if it didn't, but I found a, wor a workaround for that. Um, because what happens is basically I'm, I'm here like working on a certain part of the character's animation. Like let's say I want to um, work on this part right here and I want to where he's swinging his sword and I want to see it from that same camera angle all the time, but I want to switch between different models. There's, so now I just found this way to do that. So it, it used to be really annoying. Like this is what would happen. I'd be like, uh, oh, okay, I want to be here in this, this model. Uh, let me rotate it. Okay, okay, let me zoom all the way in. Oh shoot, that camera rotation is not very good. Let me uh, sync it up so it's 90 degrees. There we go, okay. what? How long did that take, like 20 seconds? That is a lot of time loss right there. So basically, there's a way you can save the current camera in Magicka and then restore it. So if you press the, the seven key, that's one of the shortcuts is you just press seven, it'll save your, um, your camera. And so I can go to a different model press the eight key to reload it. So that's what I'm doing there. I've, I've remapped those shortcuts to my own liking, but um, it's really nice. So I can go and say, okay, nah, I don't like that. Um, I would rather have that camera right there and I can save it and then go to a different model, load it, So that's a huge time saver. And then the, uh, what's the other thing I just learned? Oh yeah, the just simply just snapping the camera to a 90 degree angle. This is something that ha I do all the time, but I didn't know there was a shortcut for that. Like I'll be working on some voxels like about like this. And then I'm like, dang, I really would love it. I really loved if the camera was snapped. And I used to have to go drag the mouse all the way over to this cube thing here and pre press the face of the cube and you and it snaps to that face but that is this absolute slow way so you can just basically rotate your camera however you want and then press a certain key and it will snap to the nearest like 90 and i think that yeah that's the five key five shortcut so there you have it some some lessons learned with magic of voxel and and painting voxels modeling in 3d and also um oh there's one thing i edited in the code this is kind of nice um so basically let's see let's say i'm working on some um on a model like let's see this male idol animation right here and um i save it okay what that does is let's go show you how big this is right here let, Art models, male idol A0. So that's now 59K. Let's see that human. There we go. 58K. That's how big that file is saved from Magicka. Now let's lean it up. This is my utility to lean up. Uh, it basically takes a Magicka voxel file and gets rid of any of the chunks that we don't I don't use in my game engine. So check that out. We went from 60 or 58K down to like 5K. So that's basically just removing all the material chunks, which material chunks are just stuff that helps you draw really cool scenes in Magicka, but it's only for like exporting one single image. I'm just I'm using it in a in a way where I'm animating stuff for my game, so I don't use any of that exporty uh, 2D rendering stuff. So I can get rid of all those material layers, and it saves a ton of space. And what that will do is make Git a lot more happy about a year from now <laughs> this i learned this from songbringer um actually we can do that let's see uh if we go let's say if we show how big actually can we do this yeah so there's there's songbringer's git folder two gigs um that's well before i did all these uh basically before i optimized the git folder um it was something like 10 gigs and it was getting really unwieldy i was always having to go and uh edit what's that command where you like um clean up your entire git repo i forget what it is but uh anyways i was having to clean up the git repo all to all the time clean up the remote git git repo as well on my server and it was just getting super duper uh, time intensive and, and just unwieldy. And my hard drive was almost full anyways. So I learned a lesson there. And I basically took all of my, I had wave files inside Git. 
So every time I would make a tiny change to a, a file, um, for to a wave file, I would have to go and restore a whole new file inside Git's repo because Git isn't as great with um, large files. I'm not, I'm not sure that any uh, source control really is that great with large files. I'm, I know there's an upgrade to Git where you can, there's like a Git, um, uh, what's it called? Git for large files, but I just don't use that. It's just too, it's too complicated to install and figure out anyways. So I'm just using a simple Git. And so what, what basically what this, this, the whole point of this leaning up voxel files is to keep my Git repo pretty small. Let's see how big Wraith binders Git repo is without very much content really, or code. Yeah, Wraithbinders Git repo is only 137 megs right now, but that will change a lot when I add music and um, sound effects and a whole bunch of other stuff that Wraithbinders is eventually going to have. So, anyways, there you go. That's uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.